Hey everybody, it's Sunday, May 4th, 2008. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, I just got finished with Ron Paul's new book, The Revolution, A Manifesto. So I want to tell you a little bit about this book. Uh, first of all, it was uh, a very short book. It's like 167 pages. Very quick read. It only took me a couple of days to get through it, you know, a little bit here and there. Um, it usually takes me a lot longer than that because I don't read much at a time. But uh, I really enjoyed it. It was uh, a good summary of uh, Ron Paul's political message, his ideas. Uh, it was a uh, defense of free market economics uh, and freedom in general, uh, and it also explains uh, the, you know, what's wrong with our economy right now. I think my favorite chapter was chapter 6, which was, uh, let's see, yeah, chapter 6, Money, the Forbidden Issue in Politics. This is a great chapter. Uh, it really lays out uh, what's wrong with our economy and what we can do to fix it. Um, the my favorite I think my favorite line was central banks cannot create prosperity out of thin air which is absolutely true and uh, pretty you know pretty straightforward if you think about it uh, there's nothing really um, uh, obscure about what he's talking about in this book it's all based on common sense and all very easy to understand but also uh, very enlightening, the way he the way he uh, puts everything together and uh, connects all the dots for you. Uh, and you know he really explains uh, what's going on with the boom and the bust cycle very well. I think uh, he really understands uh, uh, economics, and the proof is that he can speak about economics in a way that. People like me who don't know much about economics can understand it very easily. That's the mark of someone who understands a subject, uh, is that when they speak, they don't speak over their over your head. They use terms that you understand, and they make it very uh, simple. And that's what Ron Paul does with uh, economics and uh, the Federal Reserve and how it works. Uh, you know, the boom and bust cycle, okay, all it is is... Um, the Federal Reserve uh, printing money out of thin air uh, and artificially lowering interest rates so that people have a false sense of where the economy is and they make malinvestments. And those malinvestments are the booms. And anytime you have malinvestments, uh, you will have a correction. And that correction is the bust or the recession. That is why the business cycle exists the way it does today. It's not because it's a natural thing. It's because of the interventions of the Federal Reserve that manipulates the market and deceives investors and causes these you know, yo-yo movements up and down, up and down, when uh, you know, if, if money was harder to come by and people understood that and they knew uh, what was going on, they could make wise investments and you would have slow, steady economic growth instead of these, you know, movements up and down and, uh, you know, these, uh, this, in, this instability in the market which uh, actually helps those at the top and destroys those at the bottom. Uh, and, uh, you know, also he said very simply that inflation is not the rise in prices and infra inflation is the increase in the money supply and that results in a rise in prices but inflation is not pricing itself it is the money supply that is uh, available and when you have too much money guess what you, that's inflation so if you want to lower inflation just make the Federal Reserve stop printing money <laughs> it's very simple and the government can do it just like that but they don't want to because they benefit from it and the people at the bottom, you know, they pay higher prices, but they don't get paid more. Wages, wages are always the last thing to rise. Uh, and, and also one other thing that he pointed out was that uh, uh, commodities and uh, 
products increase, but uh, the uh, money, if it is tied to precious metals, does not increase unless you know you actually go out and mine more metal and, and bring it into the market. So, uh, in a gold or silver backed uh, currency, your money, when it sits in the bank, will gradually gain value. And this is not due to interest, it's just simply. Uh, you know, the natural thing that, uh, that real money does is it gains value uh, because the, there's more and more commodities, and so the value of the commodities goes down against your fixed, uh, you know, supply of money, uh, or relatively fixed. So, uh, you know, in a gold and silver-backed uh, currency, you don't have inflation. You actually have deflation, uh, which may hurt those at the top, but helps those at the bottom. So I guess that's the reason why we don't have deflation, we have inflation. So anyway, this this is just a few things that uh, I learned when I read this book. Uh, like I said, uh, it's, it's a great book, easy, really quick read, um, and my favorite chapter is a chapter on money, chapter 6, but there's chapters on uh, civil liberties. There's a chapter um, on foreign policy, and it 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 makes sense. It makes so much sense. It's absolutely horrifying that no one is paying attention to the ideas in this book. And if if people don't pay attention to the ideas in this book, we're headed for certain disaster. And uh, so I recommend you pick up this book and read it, even if you don't agree with Ron Paul. He, you know, if you read the book, you, you will understand where he's coming from a lot better, and then you can, you, you'll know whether you really disagree or agree with what he's saying. But, you know, and, and the last thing I want to say is, okay, like he says in the book, the only thing Ron Paul is saying is obey the Constitution, folks. Okay, wake up. That's all he's saying. <laughs> you know, you can criticize Ron Paul all you want, but just know that when you do it. The only thing you're doing is you're criticizing our Constitution and you're criticizing our Founding Fathers because Ron Paul is just a big parrot and he's just repeating what the Founding Fathers and the Constitution have told us. That's all he's doing, okay? It's as long as you recognize that. Oh, and uh, one last thing. Another good thing about this book is that it has a reading list at the back. It's about uh, five or six pages of... Uh, reading list for a free and prosperous America. And uh, so I haven't read these books yet, but uh, I'm going to check them out. And uh, some of them look pretty good. So uh, if you're interested in being free and prosperous, which I think most of you probably are, then maybe you should check out these, check out this book and check out the books that are mentioned in the back. And you will know how to advocate your own freedom and your own prosperity. So anyway, thanks for watching.